Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gade. Welcome to today. You're going to enjoy today as we enter into News Flash Week, Part 3, which is the Father's love that is announcing the salvation of heaven. The Father's love that is announcing the salvation of heaven. Is that not beyond amazing? And who is that salvation? It is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is the door. Amen. So as you join on, be super hopeful and expectant and share this broadcast with those that might need it that are hard on themselves and don't love themselves. So today is about self-love. This is something I've really not gotten into on a video. I have expounded on it pretty extensively in my books that God has had me write, especially Mindfulness and Mind of Christ. Hey, Stacy, Katie, Monica, Amy, thank y'all for joining in. And so it is about self-love today, and we're going to look at the fact that Jesus tells us the greatest commandments is to love the Lord God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love others as we love ourselves. But this is the thing. You can only love other people as much as you love yourself because we always project our own self-image onto other people. Philippians 2.12 tells us to work out our own salvation in fear and in trembling. And in my book, Mindfulness, Mind of Christ, in chapter 1, I explain that what that is, is that we're working out our self-image, how we see ourselves. And the way that we see ourselves is the way that we see God, the way that we see others. And it is such an influence in our lives without knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in areas in which we have insecurities, deficiencies that are allowed. And some of those deficiencies can be hormonal. And I'm still bringing in HRT, hormone replacement therapy, as heaven's replacement therapy. And as I mentioned, hey, Eileen, hey, Lisa, God bless y'all and Tanya. In areas where I've had estrogen deficiency, as I mentioned, the brain and the importance of estrogen in the brain and how if a woman has a deficiency that continues for years into decades, then that deficiency will cause brain shrinkage and dementia. And so for us, estrogen, Estrogen is estrogen, E-S, eternal salvation. True, T-R-U is truth and true. And G-E-N is generate, where the truth generates. It is the power source, the dunamis, to eternal salvation inside of us. And eternal salvation brings victory. We learned that yesterday. And today we're going to go into the victory of loving ourselves. One of the things that I see beyond a preponderance of evidence with most of my individual clients as well as experience myself is that we are harder and more critical of ourselves than we would be of another person. I know one of the things that I always like to do with individual clients or with my son is, you know, I ask them when they're feeling down or being so hard on themselves, what would you say if another person that you knew was going through the same thing? What would you tell them? Isn't it amazing, hey Liz, how we would be kinder in relation to encouraging another person and causing them to not be so hard on themselves? It is just natural because we are so hard on ourselves individually. So today, I pray that this broadcast causes you to love yourself more and see yourself through the Father's eyes. And I'm going to look at two particular scriptures here today, Matthew 22 and Isaiah 60. And as we look at Matthew 22, we're going to look at Jesus and this commandment that is so great, that is a compass in our lives. So if you can look at today's scripture that Jesus gives in Matthew 22, Look at it as a compass, and that compass keeps us on the right path so do we, we don't veer off course. One of the things, as I mentioned in my estrogen deficiency, 
in relation to my mind that I just really became paranoid. Some things were actually happening where other people were doing things that were factual and it was not only evident, uh, uh, you know, evidence in relation to my observation, but the observation of other people in my presence. So I wasn't losing my mind in that regard. But in other instances, because I was so hard on myself and it was more difficult to take my thoughts captive, even though I could, it was like a pressing in as never before because I did not have the wherewithal inside of me at that time due to that estrogen deficiency. Like Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he said we have fears within and fighting without. And that was exactly a great analogy of what I was experiencing in greater intensity was fear within and fighting without. And so the opposite of love is fear. And when you have that inside of your heart, it is just a massive pressing in to take your thoughts captive, 2 Corinthians 10, and bring them into the submission, 4, four through 8, of Christ Jesus. And so we're going to look at that and we're going to look at self-love in Matthew 22 and Isaiah 60. And so one of the things when we don't love ourselves, there's an undercurrent of anger and frustration. And having been a psychotherapist many years ago in the early 90s, I learned that depression most times was anger turned inward. And so we're unconscious of that anger most times when you're in a depressive mood. Now, when a mood turns into a temperament, that's where a mood goes from less than 24 hours into a couple of days to six days. And once it goes past six days, it can be become part of your personality, your personal reality, if you're not careful and stay on top of it. And so today, hopefully today's broadcast will cause some of y'all that might be in a depressed mood or a temperament or in the space of a personality where you're depressed and it's become a part of who you are. And God is just going to bring you some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so that that heaviness will be lifted off of you in the name of Jesus and you will rise above it seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. Hey, Miss Donna, love you. Hey, Yolanda and the other Donna, Malden. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. And Carol and Margaret Holt. I see y'all as well. And so let's look at Matthew 22. And again, I just want to bring this about with heaven's replacement therapy. Areas in which you're deficient in loving yourself, you need heaven's replacement therapy, which is to see your eyes from above, the Father's heart and eyes. Second Chronicles 7, 16, where his eyes and heart are inside of you. And in fact, let me read that first, and then we'll get to the other scriptures today. And I just pray that this blesses you and just brings healing to your heart and mind. And so in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 16, and this is, of course, after Scripture says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and pray to him, he will hear from heaven and forgive them and heal their land. And that his eyes, verse 15, and ears are attentive to the prayers offered in this place. And this is the emphasis. For I have chosen and sanctified, set apart, for holy use this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be here perpetually. And so when we love ourselves, we're above trauma, where you'll see with PTSD in chapter 2 and 3, and especially from chapter 7 through 10, about rising above the volume of the trauma that would pull you down in your soul where you're so hard and critical on yourself. The reason that you're so critical is because you don't understand your process. Now hear this again. Hey, Janice, the reason that you're so critical of yourself and the criticalness of yourself 
is how critical you're going to be about other people. Look at your posts. Listen to your conversations. Are you criticizing more than edifying? Now think about that. Breathe. Are you criticizing more than edifying? Because if you're criticizing, that's indicative of an area in your own heart where you have not received the love of the Father. And so you're projecting your own badness, the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, the world, the kingdom of the world. And so you'll see others not from above the Father's heart, but you will see them from the world's perspective. And it's because you're looking for your reflection in the world. And at the same time, you're trying to prove your worth. Let me just help you out and give you wisdom. You will never be able to prove your worth to any person. And you don't have to because of Jesus Christ and his work on the cross and his resurrection. He has made you worthy of salvation. Remember today is News Flash Part 3. And Flash is the Father's love announcing the salvation of heaven, who is Jesus Christ. And so that love pours in and upon your members. And it becomes that Hebrews 4 bubble that I've written about in many of my books. And in that bubble is liquid love, the seventh day rest. Literally, that when other people have criticized me, either in my face and a group, or been very you know, unlovely to me, I would not feel it. I could not perceive their criticisms. I couldn't understand it. It was no different than a scientist saying, you know, the um, this particular mathematic equation that proves this particular theory is all of this scientific high-level mathematics stuff. You know, I have no clue what they're talking about. I did teach on the Raymond's hypothesis, though, in 2014 with God's Fireball School of the Prophets in the Gospel of John with physics and uh, high-level mathematics, but it had no effect on me before I could understand it because I just couldn't understand it. And I want to just give this analogy just to let you know kind of what it's like and to bring it really zero in on what you might be going through. Because remember, the only reason you criticize is because you're critical about yourself. And the reason that you edify is because you are you have the heart and the eyes of the Father inside of you. And His desire is to edify. It is to build up. That's why I love to get to prophecy. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14. Because prophecy, that gift, is to edify. I've had prophelies, which are false prophecies, where this very hard woman from the church that really persecuted me in a women's prayer group, and y'all have heard this, uh, everybody was kind of all on the other side, and there was one chair by the woman, and she's probably like early 70s by this time, and everybody calls her the prophetess in the church. And at this time, I was having a massive struggle at home raising uh, my son. And God did a massive work and brought miracles and made miracles happen and brought the power of Holy Spirit. And, oh my goodness, him walking in the fullness of the call on Mother's Day 2011 when he came out of bondage and into the fullness of salvation absolutely blessed me. <clears throat> but leading up to that time, I was going through this process of just loving God and doing what he called me to do, like David. And people thought I was proud. People thought these negative things about me because they didn't love themselves. And so I'm at this prayer meeting. The church has been doing a fast, but God didn't call me to fast. And at this particular women's Bible study group that day, it was like the marriage supper of the lamb. And Rich and I were going through a very lean season. And so we were doing a lot of pasta meals, if you know what I mean. 
and it was like I felt I was absolutely rich, like rich, brought to the king's table, and I was eating everything that there was, and I sit beside this woman, and she just starts screaming at me in front of these women, and she says, the Lord says that your son's issues are all because of you, and you're wrong, and you're doing this, and she's screaming, okay, and I'm probably about not even two feet from her, and everybody else is across from us, and I just looked at her, had shalom in that Hebrews 4 bubble, where all I felt was liquid love, and I did not understand her, and so I just raised my hand, and I said, excuse me, women, um, this doesn't bear the fruits of Holy Spirit. I said, I'm going to test this word. And I said, there's fear, there's condemnation, there's accusation. So I can't receive it. And all of those elderly women, because they were much older than me, their jaw was down to the floor. Like, oh my goodness, Robin rebuked the prophetess. Let me tell you what, first and foremost, there is only one name that should impress you, and that name is Jesus Christ alone. It doesn't mean you can't honor people, because it says when you honor a righteous man, you get a righteous reward. When you honor a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. So it doesn't mean you don't honor them. But don't be impressed by anyone. The minute that you start to look to be impre to impress others, or others impress you, then you're going to get your, yourself outside of loving yourself through the eyes of God and His heart. And you're going to get into being very critical of yourself. And we don't want that. God doesn't want it. Amen. Amen, Andrea. And so here in Matthew 22, we see Jesus. And He says, and let's start, let's start in uh, verse 36. Teacher... Which kind of commandment is great and important? The principal kind in the law. Some commandments are light, which are heavy. And he replied to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Intellect. This is the greatest, most important and first command. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. These are the two commandments that sum up, and upon them depend the law and the prophets. And so Jesus states here that we're to love God. That is the first and foremost command. And the second is that we are to love others as we love ourselves. And so this is the issue that we're dealing with today as Holy Spirit brings you into loving yourself and not being critical. And so, we're going to look at Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 2, to really help bring illumination to this place of self-love so that you see yourself through the Father's eyes. One of the things that God wants me to bring in, in relation to help people understand what's going on, is that what I do, especially learning about PTSD, in greater measure at the beginning of the year, post-traumatic stress disorder, and how some people act out. And it is unlovely, and people don't want to tolerate them because they are so demonstrative in their inward criticisms, their critical heart towards themselves, that they can be reactive and it's sometimes explosive. Now, I'm not saying be around abuse, but at the same time, we want to stay away from that. This is different. What I'm saying is that there are people that are working out their salvation, their self-image in Christ Jesus. And part of that process is pressing into the pain, leaning into the pain from the perspective of the kingdom of heaven and the Father's heart, His eyes, so that we receive that love. And part of that process is where that dark place is being opened up in our soul, like I did last week, where the core self is like the palm of the hand, and the fragmented parts are like the fingers that are closed doors, shut off. And so that core self is where the name of the Lord is, and He opens up these doors, and He brings a lot of truth, John eight thirty two, for you to be set free. And so until that time, there are areas that you're reacting out of, 
in self-criticisms and you don't realize it, you're totally unconscious of it, and you become hard on yourself, you get on yourself really bad, that you made a mistake, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have said this, you shouldn't have acted that way. Well, Romans 8, 1 says that there is therefore now no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus. And so what I do, because the world would say, and I love the movie, The Same Kind of Different as Me, it's a true story, and it's got Greg Kinnear, Renee Zilweger, and it's about this homeless guy that was very mean, but he was raised on a plantation, treated as a slave, and really traumatized growing up. And so it was a part of his criticisms about himself. So he could not love other people. He wasn't combative fully, but he was difficult to be around. And most people are like, you hurt me? You have an attitude with me? I'm going to have an attitude with you. And that is not love. Love says that we are not to return evil for evil. Love says that we're to turn the other cheek. Love says that we're to Luke 6, 35, bless our enemy, do for them, not expecting anything in return. And that way we prove ourselves to be sons and daughters of God. And so when we look at this, one of the things that I've realized with hurting people is that they do self-destructive behaviors. And those self-destructive behaviors can cause other people that are not looking through heaven's lens of the Father's heart, and they're looking through the world, and all they want to do is point fingers. And the reason that they're pointing fingers is because they criticize themselves, and they themselves feel guilty. They feel bad. And so in order to relieve their pain, they've got to project that badness and announce it about other people to take the spotlight off of their own soul in which they don't feel the love of the Father. And so one of the things is that when I'm around and I have people that I know of that have self-destructive behaviors and other people are just making a big to-do about it, I don't react and I just, you know, let people know they're working through their process, okay? And it doesn't offend me that they're working through their process. It doesn't offend me that they have self-destructive behaviors. I pray for them. I encourage them. I love them. I don't criticize them. And this is really critical for you that are out there that are listening to this. If you have a loved one and they're in those self-destructive behaviors, and understand, I have seen and walked through this with two loved ones and seen victory, salvation on the other side, because I did not walk through it being self-righteous, judging, criticizing. I walked through it being available to love, reflecting love, reflecting the good part of who that person is to love themselves. And so if you're being critical of other people, understand that it's an indicator that you don't love yourself. So what we're gonna do this week, from here to the end of the week, Be mindful if you're posting criticisms about other people, if you're talking critically about other people, and understand, as Scripture says in Matthew 12, we're going to have to give uh, an account for every idle word that we speak, that we're not going to get away with it. And as this man who died and came back and was resurrected, he was in a courtroom with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he and, and the Lord brought to him what he said about other people. And the man was denying it at first. And then a witness was brought into court. And the witness was the man's own words. It witnessed against him. So please be mindful. Do not speak poorly of others. Repent and understand, as Scripture says, it is an abomination in God's sight in relation to speaking poorly about other people, it's no different than just offing them and getting rid of them. And we don't want that because each of us were created in the image of God. Amen. And so now let's look at Isaiah 60 and let's start in verse one because we're going, hey, Katie, hey, Sue, we're going to look at 
if you are in this space of being depressed, understand 1 John 4, 18 says that perfect love drives out fear and it drives out all thought and dread of punishment. And that means that there is no space. There is no room for fear. There is only the love of God in our members. And I know some of y'all have heard that testimony as I've had many supernatural encounters with God, which is the reason why I do what I do, because it's just my call. And we're going to get into this space of understanding the love of the Father as never before and how fear is all behind criticism and not entering into self-love. So first and foremost, if you're being critical of other people, break agreement with the accuser because you're, you're just uh, joining up with Satan and you're accusing them before God and God does not go for that. And second of all, Ask the Lord to pierce your heart to have a love and to see others through his lens of how he sees them. And so we're going to look at Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 2 as I get ready to tell you my testimony. It was 2005. I was going to the gym, just left the house, uh, 2006, going to the gym, just went around the block, the corner was not even probably a hundred feet from our house. All of a sudden it felt like, and this is the only way I can describe it. It felt like my body was turning in on itself. This is the only way I can describe it. And that it was just, I was dying. That's what it felt like. And I t got off the road and I had a flip phone and I was trying to open it up to call Rich to tell him, look, I don't know if I'm dying. I don't know what's happening. And it just came on me suddenly. And I, my hand was so weak that I could not even do my flip phone. My, I, it was almost like I had palsy. And I had total weakness. And I could not do my flip phone. Now, remember yesterday when I talked about estrogen and how it supplies to the estrogen receptors for muscle repair? And that one of the d diseases of women that have estrogen deficiency as they get older is sarcopenia, which is muscle wasting. And so it was as though my muscles were not working. And remember, e e s t r u g e n is estrogen for last week and this week for spiritual relation and uh, relating a subject matter about the power of the truth and the dunamis power where G-E-N is the generator, the dunamis of the power of what? T-R-U, truth, that which is true, and E-S equals eternal salvation. And so in that moment, all of a sudden, as I pulled off out of nowhere, from my belly, all the way up to my mouth, into my hand, the palm of my hand, is that not amazing? Because I've been talking about the core self being like the palm of the hand, all of a sudden, it was this glob, and I have a massive gag reflex that I don't know anyone that has a gag reflex personally that I know worse than myself because even years later, when I think about something, I just gag. Even Rich had to take care of the boys' noses and vomiting because I had such a bad gag reflex. So out of nowhere... 2006, I'm pulled off the road, I'm weak, I feel like I'm dying, and out of my belly comes up through uh, my esophagus coming up, all of a sudden, there is this glob, the size of my fist, and it's like 10 miles an hour, comes out of my mouth, comes into the palm of my hand, feels it's this, it's this big, about this big, and like the size almost of a baseball comes into my hand and it looks like a jellyfish. I kid you not, okay? And all of a sudden, the power of the Holy Spirit flooded me and filled me. Oh my goodness. Flooded me and filled me. And I felt like I could run a marathon. And that is where you feel that lifting, where you are lifted 
in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are in that anointing of the kingdom of heaven, and you have a yoke-destroying anointing that sets you free as bread. Give us this day our daily bread in Luke 11, the Lord's Prayer. And bread, we see, is a metaphor in the parable following for the Holy Spirit. Bread, the root word is ero, and it means to lift up. And so, that ero, that lifting up, is how you feel when you're set free and delivered. And so, when this glob comes out of my mouth, into my hands, I open my door, and I'm flinging it off my hand going, What? What was that, God? And God was, Robin, my perfect love drives out fear. And he said, that thing, that oppression had been in your belly. And my love went into your belly. And it drove it out. It had no room inside of your temple. Woo, I feel the anointing. Saints, you have to know the Father's love and how he sees you. So that there is no space of criticism. That there is no space of being outside of his thoughts and his heart for you. Amen. And as his eyes are towards you and you're the apple of his eyes, Zechariah 2, 8. You're going to feel that love and you're going to project that love onto the unlovely. And so I think about the same kind of different as me, the true story that totally changed the homeless situation where they raised millions upon millions upon, I mean, multi-millions beyond multi-millions of dollars for the homeless around the nation, building uh, places of sources to stay, to be fed, to get job placements and to be taken care of. And it was all because one woman was willing because God had given her a dream about this man that everybody was afraid of, homeless guy, everybody was scared of. And in the dream, he was a wise man. And again, the movie is the same kind of different as me. And just FYI, it's on sale for Amazon to buy the movie for less than $10 and is worth it. And it's a true story. And so, because she has the vision, the dream twice, she sees him when she's helping feed at a soup kitchen, the homeless. He comes in there with a bat, so angry, so offensive to anything that you would normally want to be around. And she sees past him to what God gave her a dream about. And she loves the fear out of him. She loves the anger out of him. And that love caused a relationship, a friendship, a deep friendship that she and her husband had with this man that she had cancer that metastasized, ended up dying. And after her death, her husband and this man went around the nation changing it for the homeless and that would not have happened had she not seen him through love's eyes, through heaven's eyes. And it's because she loved herself. Saints, the people that hurt the most hurt other people. Think about this. Who is it that is hurting, that might be hurting you even, that you need to love you need to do for them, Luke six thirty five, and not expect anything in return. But let's give you these two verses from Isaiah 6, because you know what? You might not love yourself. You might even be angry with yourself. You might even be bothered with yourself. But again, Romans 8, 1 says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2, the Amplified Classic. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. 
For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all the peoples, but the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Saints, this is rising above depression. Anger turn inward, self-criticisms to where you're filled with love and you're looking through the Father's eyes. So I'm going to end as I bring up the Hebrew word arise. And it might be kum. I think it's kum because I'm doing rise and rise up in chapter four right now of the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease. And that Hebrew word is kum. And I think it is. It is. It is kum. Kum. Okay. Kum. And it means to abide, to rise, to get up, to make good, to continue, to ordain, to raise up, establish, stand up, strengthen, succeed, to make sure. You know what God's making sure you know is that you're loved. And so stop looking at your failures. And in the midst of those failures, love yourself, give yourself a break, and watch love rise. So the three Hebrew letters, Kuf, Vav, and Mim. Kuf is the ancient Old Hebrew, the back of a head or a sun on the horizon. The sun means rising. The back of the head means follow, last behind. Then we have Vav. It's a tent peg. A tent, I mean, a tent peg, a nail, it means to add and secure. And then mim, it looks like a three-humped M, and it's water, and it means massive and flooding. So what is the word picture for rise? The rising that has been added to you has massively flooded you. What is this that causes you to rise? Love. Ah! Oh, God's reminded me of the personalized tag I saw. Thank you, Jesus. As we were coming back from the gym this morning in downtown Birmingham, it was the number one space L-U-V-3. And three is usually R-E. And it means I love. Is that not crazy? It just occurred to me just now. I love. Okay. I love what? I love God first. And I love myself. As God loves me, so I can love others. Amen? God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.